so that brings us to the bottom row okay and the bottom row sort of i've sort of done as i don't know how to describe it really but it's like my audio uh, my sound sources and also my uh, audio path modifiers if you sort of mean you know uh, although that's you know there are some other bits and pieces in there as you know with these things you, they you know they keep getting moved about so on the far left here we have a grains oscillator i bought i built this as a kit it was a relatively straightforward kit there's one surface mount component in it um and actually it was pretty much the first thing i put in the rack it was one of the very first things i put in um it's an okay oscillator i think the only thing you'd say about it is is the output is not very strong you probably I mean, I don't know if you can barely hear that. So you really need to put it through a uh, some form of amplifier, which I don't actually have a gain amplifier on here. So you can download various different uh, settings for it. So it can be like a granular oscillator or a sort, you know, a normal saw wave oscillator. But as I say, generally, it, it's far too quiet to use, you know, unless you can put it through an amplifier. And I'm sure if you put it through an amplifier before it hit, you know, so to get it up to your rack levels, I'm sure it will be fine. Um, I may not I very rarely use it and I may not keep it next we have the standard dope for VCO this is one of their the more standard offerings um, has sawtooth uh, pulse uh, with pulse width modulation and a triangle and sine wave uh, as I demonstrated a minute ago the triangle wave I find quite useful when you put it through the uh, wave shaper um, and the pulse width modulation on this is very nice. It does give you a, a nice effect. Um, this, there's a sync option at the top. To be honest, I've never had a lot of luck with it. I don't get that the sync sound I would expect to get out of it by syncing its its um, frequency to another oscillator. Um, you've got a CV2 input, so you can frequency modulate this with another oscillator, which gives you some quite nice effects. Um, then we have two... Um, you've already heard the output for that so i won't bother plugging that in you then have um a little pico oscillator here and uh, this is the vco version with two banks with a range of different wavetable type sounds And it does have uh, voltage control of uh, the parameter uh, or the wave should i say a um, couple of things about this one is that it can be used as both a vco and also an lfo which is quite nice so you can have a complex uh, lfo waveforms coming out of it um, the only drawback i would say with it and i think this is just you know because the the nature of its design is the tune knob here is really sensitive you know you have a massive uh, voltage sweep on the, the tune and to try and get the thing in tune is with that tiny little knob is is really quite uh, challenging at times. So what we have next to it is the Pico Voice uh, which is basically um, a series of different waveforms I've only had it a day you can you can choose between the different type of waveforms if you're interested in this there's loads of um, videos on YouTube and that to have a look at it at but it gives me another sound source so this is the Pico Voice which has a range of different oscillator algorithms So then um, I have two filters here, I have the WASP filter and the SEM filter. So let's take a standard sawtooth through those. So this is the WASP filter, which we might all be familiar with. It has a very distinctive sound, especially at full resonance when it acts like pretty much no other filter on earth. Um, I like it for its for its interesting features, interesting sound. So 
So there we go, two filters there. Uh, noise source, white colored and a random output. So we'll take the noise source and put that in there. And then you have pink noise as well. Well, I say pink noise, you have a, you can, you can alter the, from pink to blue noise here. And also on this unit, you have a random generator, which is obviously taken from the noise. So you have a random uh, a voltage out, which is very good. And obviously very useful if you want to use that with the sample and holds up here. Um, a little thing I made myself, which is just a one into three active malt. Uh, then I have two of these little uh, mixer units. These are very, you can get these even now on eBay for about um, 20 pound, 20, 30 pound. And I just find them very useful. They're effectively like a, you know, uh, a good way to uh, mix together um, voltages, especially if you use them in line with something like a passive attenuator you know um, dual VCAs which we've mentioned before and then just at the here we have uh, an envelope generator standard for an envelope generator and this little fella here is just another another uh, gate a VCA type uh, passive gate so basically if I take something out of here plug that into there you see we'll then get that gate in that signal so if I take the signal out of there and plug something into there let's take this one out I'm not using that one for the minute You lose a bit of signal through these passive gates, but um, they're useful. They're another, for, you know, VCA which you can use. And that's about it for that. So as, you, as I've said before, a lot of uh, home-built stuff there, passive devices. Um, but I have managed to uh, keep within my limit of uh, getting a useful rack. I think I think I find it useful anyway. It's certainly useful for. Uh, the sort of sounds I like to make and I've done it all for relatively low cost. Thank you for watching.